This XMG Core 16 has one rather unique optional extra, a full Cherry MX ultra low profile mechanical keyboard. Well, this isn't the only, you know, mechanical keyboard on a laptop, and it's technically not the only laptop I've tested with one, although the last one that I tested was the absolute behemoth of the GT80 Titan with a full-size mechanical keyboard. It's the first, you know, Cherry MX or the newer uh, ULLP switches, and I must admit that I'm really impressed. Let me show you around this thing and we'll see if, well, the rest of the machine is worth buying too. These keys are Cherry MX Ultra Low Profile Tactile Switches, which means they've got a rather distinctive click or more like clack to them. Here's an example. While that noise might be off-putting to some, the tactile feel really makes up for it. You have a pretty impressive amount of travel for a still relatively thin laptop, that being 0.8mm of pre-travel and 1.8mm of total travel. It takes 65 centinewtons to actuate, which feels like the right balance for a switch like this. For typing, I really like it. The tactile feedback and positive actuation make it a great experience, although where it really shines is when you're gaming. The fast reaction time it affords you is hard to beat, and the tactile bump makes moving a really enjoyable experience. If I was gaming on a laptop, you know, full time, I'm pretty confident that I would want these switches to do it on. It is worth noting that these aren't actually the clicky switches, Cherry does make a louder set, but in a public setting like school or work, I don't think that even this setup would fit in all that well. The customizable, in German, RGB LEDs might uh, be a bit of a giveaway for that one too. And it is also worth noting that adding the mechanical keyboard option is actually a 95 euro option on this machine. Although personally, I think it's well worth that. So the keyboard is great, but what about the rest of the machine? Well, as with all XMG machines, this is customizable. I went with an RTX 4060 laptop GPU, and I'll have a video up very soon, in fact next week, explaining why that is, paired with a Ryzen 7 7840HS, 30 gigs of DDR5 4800 RAM, and 1TB of Samsung 980 PCI Gen 4x4 storage. That config comes to just shy of 1900 euros, or probably a bit over 2000 pounds, once you factor in import tax and shipping. For that, you get quite a lot though. Performance is pretty good, starting with the gaming results at the native 1600p resolution on generally medium settings, you can expect to see an average of around 130 FPS, with some of those more esports titles hitting over 250 FPS. CS2 in particular hits just shy of 300 FPS average on the low presets, whereas Fortnite on the high preset with no TSR hits just 60 FPS average. Starfield on low settings manages over 70 FPS though, so that's pretty good. At 1080p for the sake of comparison, the Core 16 performs remarkably well in Cyberpunk, matching the admittedly thinner XMG Pro 15 with its RTX 4070 laptop chip. Results like this are what I'll be kind of covering in the video next week on picking the right spec for your gaming laptop. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we get a bit more of a, what you might call, realistic result, where the 4060 laptop chips are generally grouped together, and then the higher-end chips extend their lead. Fortnite has the Core 16 on par with the Focus 16, although a decent bit behind the Helios 16 that also has a 4060 laptop chip. Flight has the Core 16 in a similar position, this time matching the much more expensive Zephyrus G14 with its 4090 laptop chip. Hitman 3 has the Core 16 on par with the Focus 16 again, which makes sense, and it's at the top of the 4060 pack. 
Lastly, in Rainbow Six Siege, the 7840HS CPU seems to be a bit of a, well actually a fairly strong bottleneck, hampering the Core 16's performance down to a, a measly 300 FPS. Uh, oh, oh that's, that's still perfectly fine? Oh, ne never mind that. Now, speaking of that CPU, performance is decent, if not exactly groundbreaking. As you would expect, in Cinebench it runs just behind the Ryzen 9 7940HS, although it actually had better single-threaded performance. It's a similar story in Blender, with the 7840HS running somewhat embarrassingly behind the very much last-gen 6900HX in the Zephyrus Duo 16. What might explain that, though, is the absolutely exceptional efficiency. At peak, the 7840HS only drew 65 watts, and it stabilised at 54 watts under load. Compare that to any of the higher power Intel chips, or that 6900HX, and you'll see just how impressive this thing is in terms of you know, performance per watt. When it comes to the display, it's fine, but somewhat underwhelming. XMG claims just 95% coverage of the sRGB spectrum, although I measured more like 97% and 78% of the DCI-P3 color space, which is pretty decent, as is the 400 nits of peak brightness and the 1230 to 1 contrast ratio, and even the Delta E average of 1.66 is pretty good too. The disappointment comes in the response time results. Despite this being a 240 hertz panel, my open source response time tool reported it could only manage 10.6 milliseconds on average. That's just 94 hertz equivalent, and that means that you get multiple frames of ghosting on screen at any one time. That's disappointing, and more so as it's clear that the panel has no overdrive, something that it clearly could do with. I hope that that's something XMG can add in in a software update, or at very least for future models. The input lag results were good, although a number of the results were slower than one frame, so not quite perfect. One other gripe I have is with the trackpad. This was honestly an infuriating experience. Much like the Chromebook that I tested recently from Acer, this trackpad failed to register my finger movements fairly regularly, and more often than not, it wouldn't register the mouse clicks either, both just tapping and the physical clicks. It just wouldn't. I couldn't open programs from the desktop without an exaggerated, elevated tap or multiple, and trying to accurately aim the cursor or something was just an absolute pain. Since this was a back-to-back -back issue for me, I got my wife to check the problem for me too, since her hands have a, a whole lot fewer calluses than mine, but still, she had the same problems, albeit generally not quite as bad as, I mean, my fairly you know, thick skin on my fingertips doesn't exactly facilitate the best connection anyway. On the I.O. front, I'm happy to report that this is pretty well equipped. You've got three USB-A ports, one Type-C on the back alongside DC in, mini display port and HDMI and Ethernet, and you've also got an SD card reader and uh, unlabeled headphones uh, and microphone jacks on the left hand side. Inside you'll find the largest capacity battery that you're pretty much allowed to fit to a laptop at just a, an absolute sliver under 100 watt hours, alongside two M.2 slots and two SODIMM slots, both of which are fully user serviceable. The cooling package is mighty impressive, although what impressed me was the metal frame beneath it all. That speaks to the build quality and rigidity of the Core 16, along with the heat dissipation and heat management, which all were fantastic. It's nice to know that you're buying a quality machine. All in all, I'm a bit torn on the Core 16. The keyboard is fantastic. It's an excellent typing and gaming experience and something that I would like to see on more models. The display is pretty mid and as a, a small gripe, why do we have 240 hertz 1600p displays on laptops that can't even break 100 FPS in most games on medium settings? 
I'd much rather have a 1080p panel here instead, especially since you'll end up using Windows scaling to make everything legible, which somewhat negates the whole screen real estate argument. Anyway, I'd describe the performance as pretty mid too, although I would note that the cooling package does an excellent job at keeping the hardware cool and quiet even under load. The trackpad issue might be a deal breaker for me, although you're probably going to have a mouse plugged in most of the time, or uh, almost the whole time, so that might not be quite as big of an issue for you, and hey, it might work for you, it might be a, a single unit issue, who knows, but I thought I'd report it anyway. And overall, I would say that this is a, a decent, if perhaps slightly flawed, package and the keyboard is certainly the highlight. Of course with that said those are my thoughts but I would love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think about the Core 16? Is this a machine you would pick up yourself? You know is the keyboard a big enough of a draw for you or would you rather have something with say a, a faster panel? Feel free to let me know in those comments down below. I'll leave a link to uh, Schenker or XMG's website in the description if you want to customize one of these and see what the pricing is like with whatever parts you might want to throw at it. But otherwise, that's kind of it. If you want to see more videos like this one, including that video on sort of how to spec your laptop, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. There's also plenty of other videos in the end cards when they pop up in a second. And if you want to be able to test your own hardware, like laptops and peripherals and things, I make the open source response time tool and the open source latency testing tool available to you at osrtt.com. So feel free to check that out there. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you on the next video.